Okay, so welcome everyone to the Topic 3 Lab. We're going to be covering interactive and multimedia website content with H5P. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what H5, H5P is if you uh, haven't used it before. Uh, and I'm fairly new to it as well, uh, but it seems like a relatively straightforward tool to use. So why H, H5P? Uh, H5P, it's an open source tool that makes it really easy to create, share, and reuse HTML, HTML5 content uh, and applications. And H, H5P empowers anyone who uses it to create rich and interactive web content. So as you can see on the screen here, uh, with H5P, teachers can create and edit interactive videos, uh, presentations, games, and more. And unfortunately today in this lab, we won't have time to cover all of the, the tools, but I've selected one which I think will be useful for you uh, and is probably in terms of complexity, one of the more complex ones. So if you learn how to use the interactive video tool, which is the one we're gonna be covering today, you're gonna be well positioned with skills to use most of the other tools in the H5P toolkit. And as you can see here, there's image hotspots, interactive videos, juxtaposition, timelines, uh, fill in the blanks, dialogue cards, drag the words, uh, a whole bunch of different things, uh, quizzes, uh, multiple choice. Uh, so in the interactive video, for example, we'll be using uh, multiple choice. The other thing about H5P is it integrates with a bunch of different tools that uh, we're using now, or that you're using now as, uh, in the education faculty. So for example, you can see there, there's Moodle, or sorry, uh, WordPress. Let me just turn on my laser pointer. You can see there's WordPress down there. Uh, there's Moodle, which obviously we use at UVic, but there's a whole bunch of other ones, Canvas, Blackboard, Brightspace. I'm not sure if it integrates with uh, Google Classroom. I'll check into that. It wasn't one of the ones that they listed here, but um, there is a way that you can link out to resources. So if it didn't integrate with Google Classroom and your school district used it, uh, you could link out to your own WordPress website, for example, so that students could watch the videos and do the interactive elements there. So in terms of theoretical foundations, and these, this is very general because again, there are a lot of different tools in the H5P toolkit, uh, but the uh, signaling principle is one of the ones that are supported by these tools. Signaling is where people learn better when cues are added that highlight key information. Uh, and in the video for topic 11, uh, we, I actually use that. I put a little, basically a post-it note and pause the video just to highlight something that I want uh, you when you're watching the video to look for as just one example. There's spatial and temporal contiguity principle. People learn better when the corresponding words and pictures are presented close to each other. Again, you can label things, you can highlight uh, parts of the screen. Uh, you can ask questions uh, to point people in the direction you want them to be uh, looking or noticing things in videos, for example. And then there's the feedback principle. People learn better in, from multimedia lessons when they receive explanative feedback on their performance. So you can do that uh, in a few different ways with the H5, H5P video tool. You can do multiple choice questions, true or false questions, and they give you the opportunity to put a more explanative follow-up based on the response of the person. Obviously a true or false question would be pretty easy. If it was true, you could explain why that was correct. If it was false, explain why it's false. But you can do the same in a multiple choice question as well. You can explain why each of the one uh, of the answers was more or less uh, accurate. So it's important to remember that just by using the H5P or using H5P to create multimedia learning objects doesn't mean that you'll be using them in ways that don't break uh, multimedia learning principles. So be sure to keep an eye on the multimedia learning principles as you plan and create your H5P multimedia learning objects. Uh, so that you can make the most effective learning objects possible for your learners and uh, and not break the uh, at least the more obvious multimedia learning principles. I think one thing that I mentioned in today in the topic, topic three, that you'll get to eventually, 
is that a couple of the multimedia learning principles can be contradictory. So you may end up breaking one, but uh, the other one may indicate that actually you're doing what you should be doing. And it can be quite situational, not only uh, the tool and the topic, but the age of the learners that you're going to be working with. Um, a multimedia learning object for a university student is going to be very different than one for, uh, you know, K, K to two or three, just as one example. So that said, if you would like to go to the website here, so here's the handout. There's only one activity and it's this one at the top here. If you click on that link, again, this is sort of an instructor outline. So it's got learning outcomes. It's got some pre-workshop um, pre uh, thing, in, which is an opened.ca website. If you have a wordpress.com website, uh, what I'd encourage you to do is just create an opened.ca website so that you can use the H5P tool that's embedded in there uh, and get some experience with it. Uh, you don't have to use it for anything else, just give it a But what you can do is click on the embed link at the bottom here, and it gives you an iframe so that you can embed it on pretty much any web page. What I'm going to do is copy this iframe, and I'm going to put it up top here. And it's got a lot of HTML here. What I'm going to do, though, is delete everything up until the first little bit of the HTML code here, which is just HTTPS, and then it has admin Ajax action here. And again, I'll go over this at the end, just in case you've uh, forgotten. If I hit enter now, it will load the content into my browser here so that I can uh, watch the video. Um, so this is a multiple choice question that I created. And then over here, true or false. And at the beginning, it's got a little uh, text box that you can put there just so you can see what it looks like. So any questions at this point?